there, my name is Ingus from IGS Electronics and today we are going to look at a uh, different kind of video again which where we're going to look at today at Mitsubishi PLC FX series PLCs and we're going to look into a uh, how to upload and download the program, uh, how to wire the inputs and how to wire the outputs and how they pretty much function and see if we can run some samples as well. Uh, sample runs on, 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 on some, uh, some uh, probably most likely on my inverter drive behind. Uh, the principle we're going to be looking at today pretty much works on all, for all of the FX series uh, PLCs and they all start from actually got Zoom in here. It will start from FX zeros. Let me zoom in. FX zeros, and then after that was FX zero, FX one series. This was just a small redesign. Then is an FX two series. Here you go, and it even works all the way back to a. The good old FX original series PLCs, and they look looks they look gigantic compared to the newer ones that they are making today. And the one we are actually going to be working on will be the one behind me, which is the FX three uh, U uh, PLC, which is the one of the latest. Well, it's not one of the latest, but there, there's later one, but something like this. Uh, these are still in the market circulation. The cable we are going to be using. It will be a uh, original standard SCS09 cable, which is why that camera is focusing on me. Basically, the CS09 uh, cable, and uh, the laptop I'm going to be using today is a CF a Panasonic CF53. Uh, a uh, tough book and the reason I'm using it because these tough books still even today are coming out with RS232 ports so uh, for that point it allows me to connect uh, the still to older type of PLCs which are requiring RS232 port and if you don't have RS232 port you can actually buy a uh, converter which has actually been uh, uh, certified by Mitsubishi. I'll put the part number in a uh, in a description. So if you want one of those, this one, this cable down here uh, converts the RS two 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 to USB. So uh, uh, so you if you don't have one, so then you are able to do that. So without further ado, let's uh, have a look at the PLC behind, and uh, we're gonna start looking at at uh, power and input and output first. So uh, the first things we are going to look is uh, what sort of voltages the input voltages PLCs need to use and usually you can see that in let's open this up let's see if we can zoom in I already pre-wired it this one this PLC is a DS a series PLC which which is in the Mitsubishi family it is a 24 volt input as you can see it says down here it's a 24 volt DC input and once you wire the power in and you can see down there is a little s slash s and this is where you need to put your negative part of a power supply into it the same one you're going to be uh, using uh, uh, to uh, activate your inputs so it has to come from the same power supply so uh, if you take the wire from from here or you're from your power supply and run it into SS and pretty much from there on your uh, inputs are ready to go and in the Mitsubishi family the all the inputs are marked as X's as you can see down there they go all the way to X47 and that is pretty much it about the inputs and if we go down a little bit to look at uh, Output is a bit darker, hopefully it can be seen. Outputs are uh let's just look at that lead down there. Outputs are for the Mitsubishi family a uh, classed as a Ys and it starts with Y0 and as you can see down there it says it says COM1 
in here, come one, and then the credit card goes to the com two, com three, and com uh, four. Uh, coms are where you put your cables, uh, basically where you put the source to it, the one you uh, the source you want, the, the pretty much the wire you want to switch. So uh, every uh, every wire that is part of the com one group, you can see down there's like a little black line in the middle, go through it. That's sort of segregation of the groups. So the com one groups goes uh, y zero, y one, y two, y three. So all these wires will be switching that one com cable. So uh, whatever you, you power you want to send through or activate and things like it will be using that uh, com for it. And then from the com two and com three, and it goes all the way to com, I believe is seven. So uh, the reason, uh, the reason that there is that many coms, because you can use different types of voltages for each com group, and you, you want to control them a bit differently and things like that. You don't have to just stick to one. So that's why there's a comp so you can sort of uh, play around it. And this PLC, it is a relay PLC, so it's just quite straightforward wiring. So uh, it is uh, fairly easy. Let me power the PLC up, because this PLC still has not been tested by me, so it will be a good way of testing it. So uh, once you power up the PLC, at the moment I'm in the run mode, it goes straight in the run mode. You can see the program is already in there. So, uh, so this is the program we're going to be removing in a minute. Once we're going to go and uh, work with the with the with the uh, Mitsubishi uh, programming software. So, uh, let me wire up the let me wire up the input and I'll show you how the inputs works and 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 and, and, and wire wire outputs as well. So I'll show you how the outputs work as well. So to wire up the 24 volt signal is actually quite straightforward. All you need to do is send 24 volts uh, to the one of the inputs in 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 in, in here. So uh, I have used the. So you basically you just need to make sure that the the, the negative part from the S uh, uh, where you got the SS down here is it's the same power supply or same 24 volt power supply. Uh, you're using for imp uh, for for sending 24 plus signal back as well. So you need to make sure they come from the same source. Other than that, I am uh, for this PLC. You can see down there. I actually have 24 volt uh, outputs down here, so I'm I'm using them. But not all FX uh, series uh, PLCs have them. I think the smaller ones don't have them. So you, so you will have to uh, work out the different way to gain it. So basically, all I do is take that 24 volt. From the source down there, or you could be taken from any of us. I could be taken from this power supply or whatever, and then and send it. And, and by using a uh, button switch, sort of, I by clicking that, us, I, I basically activate and send the signal back to a uh, zero one x zero. Sorry, x zero. So that's how simple it is, and it can be anything switch button. Uh, any di any type of digital signal uh, that is it's it's switched uh, can be sent back to the PLC, and that's how pretty much they work. They receive the information from uh, external uh, units, from uh, external systems. Uh, say it could be a switch uh, sensor or or you know, there there's so many different things I can't even think of now. So that's all it is. It sends the information back to the inputs, and the inputs gets registered inside and. And if you have our program uh, in there, the output will be executed it's the same way. And uh, I I will uh, show outputs in a minute. And uh, be, uh, but first we're gonna make a, like a, a small little little program. Quickly, as so I'll show you. But the one end of the uh, cable goes in uh, in here. In uh, uh, there's always a tricky. This way, there's like a a way of a. There you go, one in there. You don't have to click uh, on and off on the run button down there, but if you do, you just you can do that by doing that. You can see all the outputs disappeared. And but when you program it, you can a machine if unless it's a live machine, you you would. But usually, uh, I don't really bother with it. So you just every time it uploads, downloads the program, it, it turns the things on and off itself. So one end goes in there, another one goes in the laptop, an RS232 port, and I will actually show you both RS232 and a USB. So there's two types of programs you can use to upload and download the, the programs and do the programming in Mitsubishi PLC all the way to FX3 series. 
is uh, GX Developer or GX Works 2. And I believe GX Developer is roughly about £200 and GX Works 2 is roughly about £400. So the one we're going to be using today is a GX Developer. This is the most common one that I usually use and sometimes I use GX uh, Works 2 as well. But uh, both programs are sort of uh, work in tandem with each other. So if you created the program in GX Developer, it will work and it will as well work in GX works and then vice versa. So first things first, we're going to do. As you can see, I don't have capture cards. I'm uh, not rich enough to do that. So uh, I just pretty much filmed the laptop. So. Uh, I've got RS2 True connected in there, and this is I like RS2 True because because it's fairly straightforward and, and no messing around with USB. First things first, uh, if you want to download the program out of the PLC, you don't really need it. All you need to do is click read from a PLC. Once you do that, and it's already knows this is FX uh, FX CPU. Don't need to change that. It usually knows automatically what is it reading it from and uh, click OK and then it's going to ask you what you want to download just download that, that and that and then execute it's going to execute and it's pretty much going to read as you can see it reads all the all the information that is in the PLC now it's being copied into the into the laptop quite straightforward not much of a uh, programming knowledge required and I by no means am uh, a pro into programming. I know enough to get me by to design my own machines and things like that, but by no means I am a pro into it. So I won't be doing any tutorials of how to make the programming, uh, how, how programming works and things like that. So uh, I'll do the basics. That's all I do. And that's exactly it. So this is pretty much what's inside the PLC. <laughs> a very, very long, program a lot of M's are using using things like that so what well, and if you want to save it so all you need to do is uh, click on that click on a little save icon up there and let's say you type in blah 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 whatever you want to name project name and then and then no, not I didn't ever use the title and then just click Say so this as your project does not exist. Do you wish to create a new one? Yeah, you want to create a new one, and it will uh, permanently will be saved in your GX developer uh, yeah, uh, folder. So uh, where there is this is the one we. Use. So if you don't open it again, uh, that cannot be operated for specific projects. The following causes are thought the specified project has already been open in different applications. So it's pretty much already given me, so I can't do that. So that's how you pretty much save it. So once you do that, you pretty much uh, put it put, put it away and then and, and, and have a nice uh, backup for any of the machines you do. And but we, we, what we need to do in here, we need to uh, to download the program back into PLC is literally. Uh, right to PLC, but we're not going to do that. What we're going to do, we are going to a, a clear memory because we want everything pretty much a bit, just uh, everything. And then we execute and get everything out of the PLC. That's it. And close. So now, if you download the, we're going to line the read from PLC, just say. Uh, PLC parameters and things like that. There'll be nothing there. Couldn't find any instruction in the program. So pretty much this is what's inside the PLC now. So uh, what I'm going to do now is just create like a small uh, to show how the outputs work. So uh, I'm going to take how in a software it works. You put a uh, contact, I put down X. Uh, zero. Oh, not that one. I need to go into the uh, uh, edit and put yourself into write mode. So now you're allowed to write. So uh, you do that, and then uh, I'm going to put down uh, X zero. And let's say if you want to activate Y zero uh, coil and uh, Y. Zero. Once you've done that, we convert, convert the program 
he says he's happy and then you go online and then you uh, write I will do only parameters if you have to go, go I don't think it takes commands in there anyway so parameters and main and things like that send it all in to a PLC as you can see down there it already knows what PLC it is because you already automatically read that so now as you can see it downloads uh, uploads, that, uploads that into the into the uh, PLC taking a bit of time for every reason come on here we go so now that that's pretty much is how you uh, write to PLC and read from PLC is quite straightforward as I said I'm not by no means a professional uh, how things uh, into the deep, deep level of uh, programming I know enough to get me by to design uh, uh, simple basic things and things like that but as I will be progressing because uh, I need to learn quite a bit more I will most likely will be sharing with you so other than that now that we send that in let's have a look at it how the PLC is working now how the uh, combs are working in the bottom down here what we're going to use is a basic 24 volt uh, uh, DC uh, contactor so that's the one we're going to be uh, pretty much switching on our uh, Y0 and I'll show you exactly how that wiring works uh, all we're going to take is 24 volt signal uh, usually for the outputs and this contactors like that and things like that I would not use that with the same, the same power source as uh, sensors and things like that purely because of the sense of electronics and uh, there's a current surges inside the coils and you don't even though you can use the suppressors but that's a different conversation uh, we're going to use uh, it's, it's 24 volt signal just for demonstration purposes we're going to send it to the to the comm and, and, and uh, because that's the, the, that's the voltage we're going to be switching from the comm is going to go to a one and uh, neutral obviously the negative part is going to come from power supply as well that's quite simple I'll show you how that works in the wiring and real so now that we wired in the, uh, uh, what's his name, the contactor. Whoop, contactor is wired in. I quickly run you through the cabling. I have a, uh, I know it looks like a right old mess, but it's just a quickly done. Uh, the negative part of that goes into a uh, uh, A2, and then uh, the positive will come through a Y. Uh, uh, yeah, you can't zoom in. Uh, it will come from the Y0 once it gets uh, switched. And the cable to Y0, which is down here, comes from a uh, positive from the power supply. Pretty much, this is the source we are going to switch. So, by doing that, if you put the PLC back on the run mode, whoop, there you go. As you can see, now that it's back in the run mode, but you can see normal lights are lit because we have wiped the memory. And now there is just a fresh program into it. And we will see now that by uh, activating our good old switch, by activating a good old switch, and a little program that we sent in, as you can see in the PLC, the lights are coming on. That's how simple it is. And from there on, pretty much all you need to do is, 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 is grab the uh, programming manual and start pretty much uh, working with it because you know now how the inputs work and how the outputs work and how to upload down all the program and sort of get you going with the software for software wise you will need the GX developer or GX works 2 there's also GX works 3 out there but I think they are more for the for the FX5 series not 100% sure but uh, I think that's the ones I work with and I couldn't see the on the list any GX any uh, older versions on it so uh, pretty much that's how Mitsubishi PLC works it's, it's, it's fairly straightforward it's just the relays and inputs and then uh, you can do some pretty crazy magic with it once you get start playing regarding uh, when it comes down to automations so that will be it regarding uh, that I did say you're gonna try out the USB thingy but you saw it's pretty much you just attach the USB in the end upload the drivers into the system and which comes with the which, which which comes with the actual uh, plug itself with the actual converter itself, and and is good to go. Other than that, I hope all that makes sense. And if you like it, uh, please click like. If no, then then let me know why. And if you want to know a bit more about anything, do leave a comment down below. And we'll see you in the next video.